it's Carolyn the Contest Queen, and it's really tight here tonight in my studio because we're doing a huge activity. Look, it takes up almost the whole screen, and it's bigger than my workspace. <laughs> and we are going to have fun tonight. See, I even wore my spec shirt, like from Helene, select it, project it, expect it, collect it. We got that. So this is money manifesting Helene Hansel style, but I'm also throwing in a few of my own little additions from other teachers that I have learned from. And so we will add those in. I did a few things in advance and I'll show you what they are. But first, let's read what Helene had to say. Now I marked it. I even made some stickers. By the way, um, of course, I wouldn't be the contest queen without prizes. I've given away a copy of her book, and I'll give you a sticker to go with it. It's a spec, so you can remember. But in her chapter on how to reinforce your talents and greatness, she writes, drawing money to you. Buy a package of play money from the toy or game department of the store. So I got my play money. Now, I could not find it anywhere here. I went to our favorite online store on Amazon and it was shipped to me in time for this live stream. It says, write your name on all the bills. So I won't do the whole pack because it's quite thick, but I'll do enough for the exercise. Besides, I think I actually have more that will fit on this cardboard. Paste them on a good, on a piece of green cardboard. I got Bristol board, dollar store, gotta love it. And then with a marks a lot, I like how she calls it a marks a lot, print, my good is at hand and I'm gratefully receiving it now. Money's drawn to me consistently. My money supply is limitless. Read it several times each day and imagine you have a handful of money. I love that. So what we're going to do is I didn't know where she wrote it, but I took uh, Colette Baron Reed's uh, vision board class in January. And two of the things she suggests are, one, put a border on your vision board in black because it anchors it to basically tell the universe, whatever's in here, this is what we're working on. And I really like that technique. I never used to do it. The last two years I've done it, I've had more manifest since I started doing it. So she can't be wrong. The other thing she likes to do is she likes to put your connection with spirit in the middle. So what I did in advance was I had this really old, awesome uh, ruler that's nice and thick. So I used it to make the border and then I used it to measure off dead center and I used a protractor and I made a circle, right? She likes to always teach doing a circle in the center and that's where I'm gonna hand write Helene's saying in here, right on the, the paper. And then I'll glue the money around. And I am also can use a marker to, you know, draw the border and then I'll eventually like paint it in or something afterwards because, you know, we don't have enough time. So I've got this nice big, love the dollar store, good old Sharpie, king size Sharpie. And this is gonna give us that border, that nice border. So we also don't want to glue any of the money over the edges of this. We want to keep everything in the border. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but, you know, the money will glue nicely. So as soon as I finish drawing this, I know, look at it. So it's, it's, I was thinking, I need one of those, those, a second camera with one of those things and I'm able to change views and you can see straight down what I'm doing, but... Well, this is a tiny home office and this is what we do. And you know what? It doesn't matter because you can't stop and wait for things to be perfect before you move forward or do what you love or share or teach or write or draw or paint or whatever it is that you're passionate about. Because if you wait for it's perfect, you will wait forever. It will never be perfect. The conditions will never be 100%. So you just go with what you've got and just do it. So 
So now I also have my computer very far from me, but I put my mouse over here. So let's see. Oh, wow. This is amazing. Um, Pack Daddy says, I spoke with Helene multiple times for many hours. She was a wonderful person. Yes, she was. And that is very lucky. So if you have any questions as I go along, paste them in the comments and I will answer them as we go along. Now, another thing I thought would be fun to do, I even got my lucky mug out for this. I thought we would add in uh, a bit of incense to add to the air in the room and I just bought some. So I'm going to get people to vote on which one I'm going to do. So I have call money, attract money, or draw money. I'm starting to think as soon as I just said that, I think I got to draw money because her exercise is called drawing money to you. And this is money drawing. So I guess I have my answer. I don't even want to take a vote. <laughs> Helene, let us know. Helene, let us know. So I'm just going to put this on. I have this great little thing here. No, I won't burn the house down and I won't um, get it all over. I'm going to put it on the uh, filing cabinet beside me. I always like to make sure. Oh, it is wonky. Otherwise, I'll end up with ash everywhere. And that's not fun. Okay, so this is going to clear the air. Okay, so I'm going to put that over here. Ooh, so it's out of our way so I can glue safely. And the other thing I thought would be fun, okay, so I got two different kinds of glue, right? Again, dollar store. You can um, pick, you know, whichever one you like to use better. You know, there's no rules. And then I thought what might be fun is on top of the money, maybe add in a little bit of color and use some glitter glue just to make it fun. Because, you know, if it's not fun, what good is it? I mean, that's what, why we like to enter, that's why I like to enter sweepstakes. It's fun. That's why I like doing activities like this. To me, they're fun. And, uh, oh, um, Mac Daddy says, Helene did a blueprint for me. Yeah, I have, I have them too, except um, when I rearranged my office, they're on the top shelf and I can't get them right now. So this is a, this is a fun, maybe I'll show them to you one day. So she says, let me get the writing. I think we should do the writing in the middle first. So maybe you guys want to write this with me. I'm going to write it in pen first, and then I'll put it in marker, because I'm going to kind of go around a little, follow the circle. Or no, maybe it's easier if I go across. I should have lined it up. You know what? I'm going to do that right now before we, you know, nothing like a small ruler. I'm going to draw a few lines. Well, that wasn't hard enough. Okay, let's do this. What is happening with my pen? That just makes life interesting, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going to do a few lines because I don't want it to be super messy. And we'll have it looking a little bit good. These pens do not like this, this desk. That's for sure. And then we've got this. And I'll do. We'll just make it nice like this. This will make it fun. And then I can also add glitter to the other lines. You know, why not? There's no rules. You're just supposed to have fun. And when you're having fun, it's what I say about sweepstakes. When you're having fun, that's when you win. The minute it feels like work, stop, because you're not going to win when you feel like you're working, right? That's not going to work. So there we go. That's a little better. And there's no rhyme or reason. You can print this off on the computer. You can uh, cut letters and words out of a magazine and paste them on. Um, you can do this in Canva and do a virtual one or print it out in Canva. Uh, there's lots of different things that you can do. Uh, when I did my vision board, I printed a bunch, some pictures I wanted but couldn't find. I did them in Canva and I wanted them in color. I don't have a color printer. So I went to Staples, printed them all off, cut them all out, used them, looks great. So she says, 
Okay, my good is at hand and I am gratefully receiving it now. Money is drawn to me. I like this word constantly. I wonder if it's, it's constantly the same as consistently. Yeah, maybe, but I'll just do it the way she says it. I like this. My money supply is limitless. Wow, that's fun, right? Okay, so I'm going to take the smaller Sharpie. And I really believe one of the reasons this works um, is because it's also kinesthetic. And when you write it, you know, you remember things more when you write them down. And I think it's the kinesthetic uh, action that helps. Okay. So this is... Oh, I like the now in capitals. I'll even underline it. There we go. Okay. Oh, someone's all the way from Australia. Love it. And the nice thing about this is, is in a way, you, you don't need money to fulfill your dreams. Because why do people want money? If you ask people about why they want money, if you keep asking them, eventually they're going to say, well, it's going to give me the freedom to, you know, buy a house or um, get a new car or go on vacation. And I just did a video on how I thought I was going to have to sell a lot of books this year. And then I was going to be able to afford a vacation and then I won it. I didn't need the money. I just want it. So sometimes you don't need the money. So I think we're going to do the hundreds first. So I'm going to write my name on them. Now, I've never seen her do this, unfortunately. I'm just going by her notes. And so I'm just going to do this. Now, the other thing I want to add to the bottom that she doesn't talk about, that Colette Baron reed talks about, is putting on there, putting on the bottom of uh, this or something greater for the highest good. Thank you. And I really like that. And I'm actually going to use the super fat marker for this one. Okay. So this. Or... Greater for the highest good. Oh, I didn't think this one through. Okay, so I did write into this. So this is where we're at so far. I know I totally just disappeared off the screen. So that's where I'm at so far. And we have the drawing money. Did that not take? Oh, see, it's not burning. I'm gonna do it again. Gonna make sure it's really going and then blow it out. Ah, here we go. Now I see it. I'll see that. Oh, all over the board. That's good. Okay, oh, and it smells so nice. 
you know, maybe I'll do a, a drawing for some of that. Um, if I if I can go and find some more, I will buy a couple packs, and maybe host another giveaway because we all love that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to post updates. I'm going to write a blog about this and I'm going to keep people updated as to the results and to see what happens because I just think this is fun. It's, it helps you see. I think the idea is you're actually holding the money. You're seeing the money. Are you using real money? Someone has said, are you really using real money? And Caroline says, is that fake currency? Yes, it's fake. I got this on, um, it's called prop money, movie prop money, which is kind of funny because I don't know if you can read there. It actually says movie prop money right on it, right here too. And then for some reason, the hundreds, I don't know. I haven't seen a U.S. $100 in a while. Um, the, the, there's lines on this one, but the 50s, and they're all slightly covered. So there's 50s. I think you get 20 in each pack. So there's there was a hundred. Okay, so here's 100. Uh, you got 50. Uh, there's 20. Um, there's some 10s. Uh, two, uh, well, there's fives. I know there's fives in here. Fives, uh, twos, which I don't think they have in the, I haven't seen a two. And it actually says motion picture use on it, maybe for older movies, prop use only under here. Um, and then it's got like some dashes over the two. And then it's got, there's ones, of course. Right? So, and they have all different writing, different places. But I think they're really well done. And you can tell, like when you feel them, you can feel that it's not real money. But I, what I think, what I really like about it is it, I mean, you guys are going, is that real money? Is she drawing money on? First of all, if I already had this big stack, I wouldn't need to exercise. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, that's funny. And then, um, so I'm going to do hundreds all the way around the center. I just think this is fun. Um, cause it's also, you know, there, um, oh, D Martini. I can't remember his first name, but he, in the secret always, he, his one is said, and he's not the first one to say it is, um, it, or maybe it's Michael Beckwith. Uh, energy goes, no, where your attention goes, energy flows. And right now my attention is on a mitt full of money. And so, okay. Okay. You made your point regarding the money, <laughs> uh, but I think it's great. Like in, apparently, um, some people use this, not just for this type of exercise, but they use it for their own, um, uh, they use it uh, to teach kids about money or they use it for, um, you know, they pay their kids allowance out of it and then they can claim this money for privileges and different things in the house. So it teaches them about money without having to actually spend real money, which I think is a, which I think is a brilliant idea. And uh, okay. So I'm going to just keep writing and I'm really interested to see if this works. Now there's lots of different, um, techniques. Uh, Neville Goddard, his was, you know, feeling like you already had it. So you've got to be careful because there's a lot of people that teach what there's, it's called is toxic uh, positivity. You can't just say, oh, the law of attraction, um, I'm just going to be positive and think I have it and feel real good and all these negative feelings I'm going to stuff down and I'm not going to worry about that. I don't have it in my bank account and um, I'm just going to be happy, happy, happy all the time. And it's no, that's not how it works. Um, the idea is if you already had a million dollars, for example, uh, you wouldn't be focusing on, Oh, I'm, I'm happy. I had a million. You know, you just be like, Oh, I have a million dollars. Like you'd just be like neck. Um, I want to, I don't want to say blase, but it's just who part of who you are. So for example, for your car, right? You, you have a car, if you have a car, 
Um, you don't wake up every morning going, oh my God, I'm so excited to have that car. You might not even be grateful for it. Like it's just so part of your every day. You don't, you don't even, it's just there. And so one of the things I have been asking myself, who is the Carolyn that has a million dollars? Because the Carolyn I am today and the Carolyn that has a million dollars are two different people. So think about your life and who you were at certain points and then who you became when you achieved different milestones. Because who you are now is definitely not who you were a year ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. You change. And so, okay, let's do a little gluing here. And so that's a question to ask yourself or what do I need to do or who do I need to become to uh, have a million dollars? Who do I need to become? Who is that person? That's also another really good question to ask about the money. I That's what I have looked at and I think it's a good one to ask because the Carolyn that wrote the first book sure isn't the Carolyn that wrote Helene's book either um, the amount of things I learned along the way just of the, about the publishing industry um, and the tools you need to, to publish a book it's a huge experience right oh Carolyn says uh, oh I like this one a richer version of me And uh, it's interesting because I've been listening to, um, there's different kinds of abundance. I wrote this down. Where did I write it? Was it in this one? I have two journaling going. Maybe that's not a good idea. And so when I hear things, I write them down. So one of them is, and I give these out. I buy them every time I find them, but they're getting harder and harder to find. Is... There's different types of abundance. I heard a, a speaker the other day, Daryl Anka, and he talked about it. And he talked about the, um, yeah, so there's there's five form of abundance. So the first one is money, obviously. But we, we can be abundant in all different ways. He said you can be trading or bartering. That's another form of abundance. You know, I have this, I'll trade you. Gifts are another form of abundance. Um, synchronicities are a form of abundance and imagination and inspiration are a form of abundance. So I had this idea to do this live stream. For example, I was inspired when somebody had asked me about what Helene thought about the lotteries. And so I read this part of the book and then I thought, Oh, that's interesting. Look, she has this other little exercise that might be fun to do. And so I turned it into a live stream. So I was inspired. So that's another form of abundance. So we want to take advantage of all forms of abundance. Oops, I just glued one down without my name on it. Okay, let's do that. And so uh, there's lots of forms of abundance. You know, someone can buy you a coffee tomorrow. That might feel abundant if you, you know, forgot your wallet at home and someone just buys your coffee. Show me, oh, but Bill, you're so funny. Show me the money. Right? Actually, someone said they, they, um, I heard a joke and someone said, well, it wouldn't be show me the money now in that movie. It would be show me the cryptocurrency. I just, th I just thought that was hilarious. So there's all kinds of money. And then also, if, since we like to enter sweepstakes, um, I think we'll just, that would probably kind of uh, be under the form of gifts, is prizes, right? And oh, Leanne, yes, Leanne, gift cards, another form of abundance. I think those... I think gift cards might fall under the money heading and then um, 
prizes might fall fall under the gifts heading. There we go. I'm gonna overlap these a little. This is actually a lot of fun, and I think I think part of it is when you're putting energy towards something that also um, magnetizes it. Uh, when you read Helene's book, oh, this one's a little too close to there. When you read Helene's book, you will see that she, when she wanted to win a car, like here, I'll, I think I'll, I'll read you that part. And this is kind of, this is important too. I was going to say kind of important. No, it is important. It's all important. She, she didn't just willy nilly put things in this book. She was very specific about the story she told because each one had a purpose. And when she wrote her first book, it was only half the size of this. And then she added, when she rewrote it or updated it, right, she had it. So, so if you want to win it, right, she says, um, they decide, the winners have a common denominator. They decide what they want. They imagine they have it. They know they will get it. That's the exact same thing for this rather than prize. You can just substitute prize. Um, she says, so how do I go about changing my thinking, my attitude, and my luck to become a winner? The answer is think it, do it, believe it. I am a winner and I will achieve all my goals. So there is the bit about that. I want to see where's the bit about where she won her car. Maybe that's in the first part. She, oh, she won a pickup truck. So when she did this, she heard the radio station. I want to read you what she did. Okay, so here's what she did. So after she read an ad about in the paper about a, a radio station that was giving away cars, she decided she wanted to win one. She said, ha ha, an opportunity to get my car. So after reading the ad, I got so excited I didn't even bother reading the rest of the paper. I went to my desk immediately. The contest was to begin on Monday, which was the very next day. So I wanted to get some entries in on the first day because the chances would be better with fewer entries. That adage still applies, by the way. Some, some good contest advice never fades. In a contest where drawings are held over a period of time, it's best to get in on the first of it, then continue to send in one or more entries each day until your name is called. By 2 p.m. Sunday, I had mailed four cards. Collecting... A sample entry blank pictured in the ad. I used colored poster board and cut out cards in the shape of the car pictured in the newspaper ad. And the time spent doing it added positive energy to my goal. It takes a little effort on your part to set up the situation for yourself, but it's fun to be creative. Okay, and that's why this process is the same. We're being creative with it, and you can feel the energy as you're writing, as you're imagining, as you're gluing. So to, I venture to say hundreds of thousands of people noticed the full-size ad, and I'm sure many found it interesting and had a desire to win one of the cars. Some would put the ad aside and give it further study, and some would actually cut out the blank and mail it in, which would be the first step. It takes one more step to be a winner to picture yourself having the car or being in the car, or whatever your creative imagination comes up with. And then she says, um, the Monday morning began a fun and game time for me, waiting for the call, making me a car winner. So she goes on, but she already in her mind pictured she won the car. So she said in her little description of this exercise, you know, already see yourself having a fist full of money. Or in this case, since times have changed, you can envision um, a whole, a whole uh, boatload of, um, you know, zeros in your bank account. Like picture a statement with a lot of money. Yes, um, a, a Facebook user says, I should pick up that 
a book soon. Yeah, you can get it in Kindle, uh, Kobo, Google Books, Apple Book. Like, it's everywhere. I put it everywhere. And in keeping with Helene's um, wishes, she wanted her information to be reasonably priced for people so that everyone could afford to learn how to be a winner and how to use her spec method. Um, I did a bingo board and won four things on my bingo board. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. You know, that's kind of this exercise, but with prizes. So next time, when you do your bingo board, I'm going to get you to change it up a little. Instead of the free spot in the middle, write something similar. My good is at hand and I'm get gratefully receiving it now, which is the same for prizes as it is for money. And then you could say prizes are drawn to me constantly. My, um, my prize wins are limitless. You can just change the wording a little. And then do your bingo board, but still at the bottom, say this or something greater for the highest good. Because you don't really care if you win this car or that car. Right? So be open to wherever the prize comes from. I think that might be fun. And then do the border to anchor it. And you still have, I mean, these Bristol boards are massive, right? You have plenty of room within the board to be, now I wrote pretty large because I made a big circle, but you can write smaller or you could even print it out in a square. Uh, like in Canva or any computer program and print it out and paste it in the middle. You can even put a faint star in the background, just like on the uh, bingo, um, real bingo cards. Like you can have fun with it. And then, like I said, you can, you can add glitter glue. You can find money stickers. You can find, you know, you can decorate it a little bit. Um, just have fun with it. I think that's the point is... What I didn't realize for years, and it's funny because I met Helene in 2008, and I didn't really kind of get some of her stuff until I was actually rewriting her book. And then I realized when I was writing the um, the the afterword, hello, the whole point is in the title of the book. It's a game. And what are games? Games are fun. If you sit down to play a game with your family, you're having a good time. You've got the chips out. Somebody's got the pretzels. You got cards. You got soda. You might have a glass of wine. You're sitting there having a good time. You're talking. You're laughing. You know, it's just. Um, Maria asks, is the book on Audible? Not yet. I actually did a little video on that. Uh, this. Um, I don't have the funds to professionally record it yet. And the current equipment I have and the space I have isn't conducive to uh, recording. So until I have those things in place, again, another good idea, right? Draw the money to me. Then I can turn around, reinvest it in my business, make an audible book. Um, yeah, tell that to the gladiators in the Roman arenas. Well, they called them games too, but this is, you know, it's all the intention behind the words and the imagery you give it, right? They, it's, you know, if your first thought is something morose, I, you know, maybe we want to switch it. But anyway, Helene called it name it came game, and it's not very far off. Um, Florence Scoville Shin, and she also implied that it was a game. And yes, Neville Goddard. Um, oh, if I if Helene was familiar with him, I would assume she was. I don't think she actually met him because he was in the kind of group. So there's been if you look at the history of these teachers. One teacher comes after the next, and they all 
And I want to say improve, but they have a slightly different message because it goes with the times. So we had Florence Scoville Shin, and then we had the Neville Goddards, and then we had, you know, the Jose Silvas and the Helene Hadsels and the Wayne Dyers, and then we had, like in the secret, we had the Joe Vitales and the Jack Canfields and and the Bob Proctors, and then um, the next lot, right? Like there's this progression of teachers and they all put their own spin on it. So there's Hay House right now has a myriad of teachers. And at some point, like Helene passed me her baton. And at some point I'm going to pass the baton on to the next uh, teacher. So I don't know if she actually knew Neville, but she knew uh, Jose Silva. She knew Dr. Joseph Murphy. She knew Norman Vincent Peale. She knew Paul Twitchell. And I'm sure there's probably a heap more that she knew that I don't even know she knew them. Uh, yeah, another interesting book I want to read. There's a lot of really uh, good books. I have loaded my Kindle. Every time Hay House has a sale or I find a really good Kindle book deal, because uh, I get the email on the Kindle book deals every day. And if they have one of the books on sale for a dollar, dollar nine nine, two dollars, three dollars, I just grab it and put it on my Kindle. And then, so I have like hundreds of books. I have everyone from Kyle Cease, who teaches the illusion of money, as the name, title of his book. I just had Andrew Cap on with the last law of attraction book you'll ever need to read. There's uh, Michael Samuels, who wrote uh, the law of attraction in action, I think it is called. And he's actually, that's his pen name for that book. He's actually Michael Oaken, who wrote um, the Monster series, uh, Monster something, right? So he, he wrote that one. There's a lot um, of, different, of different teachers on that. And they all have their different uh, spin on it. And I think Joseph Murphy said it. So Helene actually said to Joseph Murphy, hey, um, how come you write the same story, certain stories over and over and over again in your books? I mean, why? Like, why are you repeating yourself? And he said, sometimes somebody has to hear something 42 times before they get it. And that's why I think there's so many teachers because three of us or 10 of us or 50 of us might all say the same thing, but we all say it slightly differently. And when you hear it from one particular person at a particular time, it clicks for you. Right? So. Oh, um, yes. Andrew Cap was very inspiring. I really liked him. I actually found one of the pink, journals after I spoke with him. So I mailed it to him. He was so happy. He says, Oh, I'm going to use it for my scripting. I'm like, yay. Um, she told me she was the new Robert Monroe very well and went out of body all the time. She did go out of body. So there's a lot of stories. Okay. So let me explain this series to you here. I'm going to pull her books out and, um, so when she wrote this book, there's actually a part in here that she um, talked about her guide saying to her, you know, you're not supposed to be writing this book. This isn't the book you're destined to write. And she said, I know. But the reason she wrote this book is because you got to remember, first of all, she wrote it in 1971. The way people thought about the law of attraction and the silver mind control method and all these different types of things back then is way different than it is now. It's more than 50 years ago. There's a huge difference in how you can reach people. And, um, Oh, if you're go find subconscious laws, her name's Linda laws is a nickname in Australia love laws. She is, I, <laughs> she doesn't take, first of all, her accent is brilliant. She doesn't take any crap from anybody. When people say stuff, she yells at them like, come on, pay attention. 
She's di I can't imitate her properly. You just have to go follow her. And I watch her every day on TikTok and she makes me laugh and smile. I'm so happy when she pops up on my screen. And most of the time she's within the first five videos, like every day. Love it. Love it. Uh, she says, I repeat myself daily. Hi, darling. Yeah, she does. She and she really teaches. If you want to follow a person that teaches Neville Goddard's techniques spot on, as they say in Australia, she is your woman. She is fabulous. Love her. Uh, I would I try to channel her. I'm such a cap. I'm so I'm such an earth girl. I'm so grounded. I'm so still. And I see people like Linda and she's just like out there and just brilliant. So Helene, let's go back to Helene. Helene knew she wasn't supposed to write this book, but she knew back in the day that people weren't going to hear her, her woo woo out of body experience stories. So she wrapped it in the, in the sweepstakes. Okay. And I also had this intuition probably about 2002 that I was to teach this stuff that for, uh, with sweepstakes, but as part of sweepstakes because people wouldn't hear it. But if they did it for the guise of under the guise of winning, they were going to do it. So if someone whose belief system wouldn't allow them to say meditate or repeat some of the affirmations or go down that some of that road because they're in a family that just would poo poo it. If they turn around and do one of these little vision boards and say, I'm just doing it because I want to win a car. Meanwhile, they're meditating the whole time. Then their family or the people around them will, well, Oh yeah, that's just, that's just Carolyn. She's being, she just wants to win a car. She's putting on a vision board. So you could, do this type of thing without getting so much flack from the people around you because, oh, it's just under the guise of winning. Then she wrote her book in contact with other realms. And right off the bat, she talks about, are you in touch with your guardian angel? Are you aware that help from the unseen world is a heartbeat away? Are you using your mind to its full potential? And she talks about thought forms, apparitions, levitating, and becoming invisible with Paul Twitchell. And she loved Helen Keller's quote, life is a daring adventure or nothing. And so she talks, she has all kinds of experience. And she starts in this book, she starts with um, when she was six and how she saw uh, her grandfather pass. And everyone said there was an angel coming to get him and she wanted to see this angel. And then she just saw a bunch of people she didn't know come and get him. And she saw him sit out of his body and leave and his, or his spirit go and his body was still there. And she was asking her mom where the angel was. And she said, but it was a bunch of people. And they're like, Shh, don't say anything. So she grew up in a totally different time. She was, she was raised in Oregon. No, that's not right. I know it. It's just not coming to me, but, um, you know, very different time and space. And then when this one went out of print, she wrote this book, confessions of an 83 year old sage. She started when she was 82. It took her a year to write this book. And this one, she talks about things that she didn't even write in the other book. Um, different, different stories about how things happen. Um, so she has like, she talks about Joan of Arc, um, memory, imagination. Um, I believe in destiny. So she, and then she has some, she retells some stories like that. She talks about Paul Twitchell again. I'm going to read you a story that she did not include in, is it this one? No, it's not about thought forms. It was this, it was not included in this story and it's about Dr. Joseph Murphy. Let me see. And he also, because she became famous in this book because she won every contest she ever entered and she um, 
want a fully furnished home. Most people don't know that Dr. Joseph Murphy also manifested a fully furnished home. And so he came, so he calls her one day. So here's, um, okay, so she says, when I answered the telephone shortly before noon that day, little did I realize who would be sitting at my dinner table that evening. I'm Dr. Joseph Murphy. I've been invited to Dallas to give a lecture series. Norman Vincent Peale suggested I look you up. <laughs> How crazy is that, right? And when is it convenient for us to meet? Without giving it a second thought, I suggested he come to dinner that evening. I'd never heard about Dr. Murphy's work, but the fact that he was a friend of Dr. Peale's prompted me to extend the invitation. <laughs> see people didn't have the kind of connections and things then that they do now like we can just google anything we we live in a world where we can just say oh i don't know google it in the past we just didn't know we hadn't met people we didn't see people we weren't as connected so there's advantages and disadvantages to everything anything in particular you would like for dinner i asked yes a baked potato ground round steak peas and carrots i'll bring the scotch and i want to talk to you privately he added Dr. Murphy and his driver arrived promptly at seven with a bouquet of flowers. Five foot two inches tall, his eyes reminded me of my wisteria bush, blue with a purplish cast. He was in his mid-70s. His withered complexion displayed a roadmap of laugh lines, gregarious and assertive, and soon discovered he's also like a, a take charge person. That doesn't surprise me. Immediately after dinner, he lit a cigar, announced my husband and the young man that drove him, watch TV or get acquainted. I want to spend some private time with Mrs. Hadsall. Dr. Joseph Murphy, PhD, from 1898 to 1981, was born in Ireland. He was a world-renowned authority on mysticism and mind dynamics. The author of more than 30 books, he remains a beacon of enlightenment and inspiration for legions of loyal followers. So, yeah, if you can find his Kindle books, um, sometimes really inexpensive, they have sales. And if you don't have a Kindle, you don't need a Kindle. If you have a tablet or even a cell phone, you can download the Kindle app and just get books inexpensively. Um, I personally like to have the Kindle. I've had one since I, I won one in 2012. And then mine died like two years ago. I was so sad. And um, I got a new one for my birthday. I don't win everything. <laughs> but I win a heck of a lot. So he says to Helene, I'm curious to know how you will interpret one of my personal experiences. I've never written about it in any of my books, nor do I intend to. I know that what the reaction of the majority of people would be if I told them, he explained. Now, again, you got to remember, this was you know, 40 years ago. I don't wish to be accused of being a warlock or that I have the power of the devil. Then he began telling me the following story. He was raised in a strict Catholic family and immediately began his studies after graduating from high school to become a priest. All of the 10 Murphy siblings became active in the church. His six brothers were priests and his three sisters were nuns. And he eventually migrated to the United States and was assigned to a parish in California. He had some ideas he wanted to explore, but the Catholic diocese in his district did not approve. So he took a leave of absence. Um, his only income was from a local radio station. He wrote the thought for the day, which were uplifting sayings that were used as a public service. After renting a room, he began exploring the ideas that met with disapproval from his superiors. His goal was to live in a comfortable home, to have a garden with a water fountain, a stockade fence for privacy, and to produce program tapes. So, <laughs> what people used to do. Actually, if you watched my lucky live stream on St. Patrick's Day, um, I got one of the original tape sets of the Silva Method which I've been listening to. I'm on tape two. It's crazy fun to, I feel like I'm back in 1982. 
uh, listening to a tape set versus something else. There's a, a, a sense of the recording, the tone of voice and the music and everything. And you can hear the tape turning. It's such a different experience. I think it's akin to the people that swear records are better than streaming, you know. So he says, with such a small income, he, he ate a lot of peanut butter and crackers, canned soup, and canned soup that he heated on a hot plate. For five months, two weeks, and three days, he was a recluse, devoting all of his time, composing uplifting phrases, and visualizing his goal. I would picture myself walking up to the house and sitting in the backyard by the water fountain relaxing. Each time I went into meditation, I kept adding things that I would like in my home original artwork, oriental carpets, a library with books from floor to ceiling, a circular staircase that would lead me upstairs to a massive bedroom overlooking the Hollywood Hills, and yes, a room upstairs that would be soundproofed, stocked with recording equipment and plenty of tapes so I could make my self-help tapes covering all subject matters. One day, a knock on the door brought him out of his reverie and turned out to be the answer to his programming that included everything that he'd been visualizing since being on his own. An attorney representing a client that recently died told him that he was the sole heir of their estate. The attorney had contacted the radio station for Dr. Murphy's address as he had no telephone. Well, he began explaining all how all of this came about. I sat back pinching my arm to assure myself I was awake. I can only imagine Helene listening to this story. The woman and I had never met. She was not a member of any church. The attorney told me that she heard me on the radio. In fact, she had written down the messages that I had composed and read daily. I went into the radio station once a week and taped them for later airing. So he would go in once a week and record a whole week's worth. The messages made such an impression on her that she wanted me to continue my work in broadcasting and writing. He explained as he sat chewing on a cigar. Are you ready to see what you just inherited? You were going to be quite surprised, the attorney said as he drove me towards the Hollywood Hills. All I could think about was, now I can make tapes that will benefit and uplift the listeners. I was in total shock. Not that my programming had come to fruition, but it took such a short time. Everything I had programmed for had manifested. I almost blew it after we entered the home and I saw the circular stairs leading to the second floor and asked, is there a soundproof room upstairs? Intense astonishment touched the attorney's pale face and he asked, have you been here before? How did you know there was a recording studio upstairs? That's been a desire I've had for some time, making tapes of positive affirmations. I found the majority of people have to read or hear something over and over again before it sinks in, right? Back to that story. Listening to tapes repeatedly will help change their mindsets, I explained. Not only did I inherit all of the material goods, there was a clause in the will that took care of the taxes, the monthly upkeep of the property. He chuckled with happy memories as he relayed his story. Now, my question to you is, this is what he was asking Helene, how would you interpret what happened? How did every one of my goals become realized? He said, you, she, Helene says, you connected with each other via telepathy. The woman, while listening to your thoughts of the day on the radio, was impressed by the messages you gave. She was sitting in the midst of all of her prized possession and decided that you were the person that she wanted to give them to. As she sat admiring each item, she was sending out a picture and thinking about you. You, in turn, were meditating and receiving her predictions, thinking it was your idea. You connected mentally, and that's why when you saw the property, it was like a dream come true. Helene says, I don't blame you for not wanting to share this experience with the masses. They would still say that you were a witch or have some help from the devil. A few might comprehend how it happened, but why take chances, she added. Are you being accused of using witchcraft since writing your experience about winning in the house, all the trips, cars, and merchandise, he asked, smiling. I was anticipating the witchcraft accusations, so I deliberately coined wishcraft in my book title, The Name It and Claim It Game, Maneuvers for Wishcraft. And yes, to your question, I still get a lot of letters from excited people that read my book and tell me if they're winnings of their winnings by following my detailed steps. And what are you doing at the present time, I asked. 
And he says, I did a lot of soul searching and I'm presently minister director of the Church of Divine Science in Los Angeles. And I still continue to do daily programs. So then, you know, after they left, but you guys can, can read that story. Anyway, I just love that story. Um, because she won a house. She has the story in this book about how she won a house. And then she tells the story how Dr. Murphy manifested a house, fully furnished home, everything taken care of. And I think that's one of the things um, people need to remember is that they think, well, how am I going to get this? I don't have the money. Don't worry about the money. Focus on the end result, and then the path will appear. And it might not be straight, but you want to be on the path of least resistance. So this path might be shorter, but it might be full of hurdles and obstacles. Yet this path is winding and looks like it's going off in that direction at first because it goes through the woods and around the corner and whatnot. But it flows easier, and it's a simpler path because what if you need to go over there to get some information? And, pit, and then go here. It's like one of those quests. You know, those games where you go on a quest. And you got to go here and unlock that thing and get the key. And then go over here and, and do this little thing. And then you got to pick up this piece. And then by the time you get to the end, you have all the pieces. And you can, you can figure out the puzzle. So it, it's similar. Our, our lives are similar. We focus on what we want. And then we'll see uh, what the road is to the end result and you have to trust it. My, um, my client, Robert calls it backpack guidance. He says, if you knew the whole path, you would be like, Oh heck no, I'm not doing that. He said, but if you know it a little bit at a time, you know, you get, if you're driving to New York, so you're in LA, and you want to drive to New York and it's nighttime and your headlights only show you the next 200 feet. Jack Canfield uses this analogy. You know that you're going to end up in New York. You trust there's more road past your headlights. You just keep driving. You know that the next 200 feet and the next 200 feet and the next 200 feet are going to be there. You don't think the road's going to, you know, just disappear. And, but you only can see the next 200 feet and that's what going you know, some of the path is you only see the next little bit. So you're like, well, how am I supposed to get over there? I can only see up to here. Trust it. Trust that you, you know, the next steps. Okay. Let's go look at some of the statements people are saying. Right. Yeah. Totally amazing. I love that story. Oh, I love it. Yes. 42 is the answer to the ultimate question in life. Hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy. Yeah, it is. I love it. I actually had, I don't have any more. But I used to have some tea from Harrods. The reason I think the story goes that he used to enjoy the Earl Grey tea from Harrods. And it was blend to number 42. And so when he needed to come up with something for the life universe and everything, that's the number he picked. Right? Oh, I never even thought of it, Brittany. Escape rooms, just what you described. Right? Now, you guys go into the escape room. If you go, it's a game. Right? Game. You, you know, you go in, you're going to have fun. You know, it can be a little hard and complicated. You have to think, oh my gosh, what does this clue mean? You know, uh, you know, what, what are we supposed to do here? But you do know that at some point you will get out and then you can have fun along the way. So that's, that's exactly it. Now, what if we approach life? The same as an escape room. That sounds a little. <laughs> but it, if we approach it as fun, like, oh, I'm going to hang out with my friends. I'm going to figure out a bunch of clues. And I'm going to have a good time the whole time. And, you know, the, the thing is, a lot of people say, well, if I want to manifest this, so does everybody else. No, actually, they don't. You know, when I talk to people about what they want to win, because I talk to people all the time about this, um, everybody has different goals for prizes. Some people want to win new appliances. Some people want to win a car. Some people want to win trips. Some people only want to win this kind of thing, you know, gift card. Like what, you know, everybody has different prize goals. 
and companies spend literally, literally billions of dollars running promotions every year. There are enough prizes for everyone. I think I might have just run out of hundreds. Let's see. I need more at the top, I think. One more here and one up here. This is kind of fun. I'm interested to see what happens. So I'm energizing it. Now, here's another thing. You can energize things with your friends, too, because one of the things Helene talks about in this book, do you remember if you've read it, she goes to the Christmas party and everyone goes, oh, the Hadzels are here. Yeah, we're not going to win a door prize. Like they've already written it off and they haven't even entered yet. And they already have assumed that because the Hadzels are there, they're not winning. And so she said, basically, everybody at the party gave us their winning energy. And of course we won the prize. Okay, let me see if there's any more hundreds in here. That sounds like a problem. Okay, I wonder if I have any more hundreds. This is really fun money. I highly recommend it. I should put, a, I'll put a link to it. It's, it wasn't inexpensive though. I think it cost me $20 for all this play money. But I figure, you know, I become a millionaire. <laughs> it's worth it. Oh, I found another, uh, uh, what do they call that? A, uh, no, the five's a fin. I can't remember. There's a nickname for it. Okay, so I'm going to take out all the 50s. I think the 50s are all stuck together. I dropped this on the floor while I was setting everything up, so the money went everywhere. I don't know if that was a, a sign or something. Um, oh, there's another 100. <laughs> okay. So if anybody has any questions, oh, see, um, I want a new roof. Uh, everybody has it. So here's what you could do. So if you wanted a roof, focus on the end result of having a new roof. Just imagine the uh, workers coming with all their materials, your old roof going into the bin, your new roof being put on. They're doing it at a convenient hour so you're not being disturbed. Um, and it's at a convenient time and the perfect time of year. So everything goes on really, really well. That's what I would envision. And then start entering everything that could get you to that goal. Gift cards, cash, roofing companies, um, anything like that. Ooh, this is a good idea. Carolyn, since the hundred zone out up to a million, maybe glue a fake check for the missing amount in the corner. And I want you to become a millionaire, not just a thousandaire. Um, I'm not going to worry about that because on my vision board, I actually have um, a million dollar bill on it. <laughs> and I'm going to glue this one right under my vision board. And if you go back and watch my lucky live stream, I, okay, so now I did my lucky live stream three weeks ago. And it's the best vision board I've ever done. I highly recommend you guys all go follow Colette Baron Reed. You can't do her vision board challenge for free now. She only does it for free every January. If you were a member of her uh, program, I think it's called Oracle School, I think. If you're a member, you can access it because uh, she keeps it in the membership. Of course, she uses it as a membership drive. She's a businesswoman, of course. She has to, you know, um, take care of her business and her staff. And, and, you know, she needs to be resourced for what she's teaching. And so she does it for free and then she puts it in her, her membership. Uh, but she does it every year. So highly recommend you just go follow her on social um, I personally prefer to see her on YouTube, but her challenge is always on Facebook. I don't think she streams it to uh, YouTube also. I think it's only on Facebook. And so some of the techniques she teaches I'm using here. But when I did that live stream, I had to, uh, one, two, I had three things manifest. And since then, I've had two more in progress which when they do, I will talk about it. Um, 
So I, uh, okay. So Kellyanne, oh, she's got a long one. My husband and I went, were given tickets for a door prize. I told the announcer that I would love to win the main prize. Plenty of tickets were called before me. They did not get collected. Ever, eventually the announcer called out my ticket. The announcer ended up actually asking me if I did win. I showed the ticket and collected my prize. That's awesome. If you go follow Kathy Partak on TikTok, over the, before St. Patrick's, she did like a, I think it was like 10 days of giveaways. She gave away a bunch of prizes. And every day she did a TikTok and I was sharing them. But she talks about the time that she won. She does video stories. And you have to go listen to these stories. They're crazy, amazing stories. She, I, she's got to write a book one of these days. And she talked about the time that she did just that. She called the radio station and said to the DJ, um, hey, have you guys announced the winner yet? And he said, no, we're going to be doing the draw soon. And she goes, oh, well, that's okay because I'm the lucky winner. And he's like, ha, ha, ha. They're all like, ha, ha, ha. And they end up hanging up. And 10 minutes later, they phone her. And they're like, was that you? She's like, yeah, it was me. I knew you were gonna, I was going to win. And she's, she's bang on this stuff. And she talks about that. So she's, she's really cool. Um, so I think I've covered all of Helene's stuff. I'm still gluing and writing. And then I'm going to blog this. And I'm going to show you the finished product. And then I am going to do uh, updates and let people know how it's going. And, you know, I like the idea of the million dollars. I don't know if I'd write a check, but I think maybe around the edge, I'm going to write. I'm going to actually take that. I like that idea. I'm going to write um, a million dollars in the corners. So uh, I'll do it backwards. So I don't, um, let's see. So I'll show you guys. Right. So I just did that. So now I'll just do it again here. Yeah, I'm going to make the corners the million, the million corners. I like this idea. So this is where you can just have fun with it. Because one teacher suggests one thing. Um, doesn't mean you have to follow it exactly. You can modify it with modern methods and add to it and have fun with it. I mean, that's what Helene says exactly in her book is, you know, ma, ma, she gets creative. So now I've just, here, I'm going to show you guys where, where I'm at so far. And I'm going to do some glitter. Okay, so now I just millionized it in each corner. <laughs> and maybe... Um, I'll put a piece of green in. I'll glue some pieces. Awesome. Good idea about the million dollars. There's a fake million dollars that can be downloaded from the internet. Oh, yes. Um, that's true, too. So I have that one. It's it. It's like the Statue of Liberty. It says a million dollars. And then I have a card that says, um, bring, bring the money to mama. I got a postcard at one of the sweepstakes conventions. I love it. And then I... So I put pictures representing everything that I want, and I'm just letting the universe bring the best version of it to me, whatever that looks like. And it may not look exactly like you think, but you just have to be open to whatever it is. Um, like I told the story of how I did a TikTok on it, and I talked about how I manifested the trip. So here I am. I was on vacation, and I think that was part of it. Actually, because I was actually in on a vacation, I already felt like the vacation. So I didn't have to imagine it as much because I was already there. And I was talking to George about how I wanted to take my sister on vacation and how I manifested the, the trip a week after and thinking, oh, I, I can't afford it for another year. I'm going to have to, you know, sell a ton of books. I'm going to have to become solvent. And then maybe I can afford a trip. No, a week later, I just won it. Called my sister. Hey, now we're going in November. Done. 
finish. <laughs> right? See, actually, I should add another million because that's four million. Five million. Oh, I'm going to keep writing the millions. Now I'm just adding millions. I like this. So, uh, okay, so I need... Yeah, I'm just going to keep adding millions around the border. I just realized that every million is a million. So I'm just going to add another one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's good. Nine. <laughs> Kazing, so fun, right? And you see, I'm just inspired. So I'm like, okay. Oh, these sides are shorter. So, uh-oh, I just mucked that one up. How do I fix it? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I can put some money over it. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Maybe I'll paint some gold in the corner or something. I'll have some fun with it. But, yeah, now you're thinking like a millionaire. That's right. And that's and that's the fun of it. Right? It, it's you got to have fun with it. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. And I'm going to let you guys, and I'm going to keep everybody up to date. And if anybody actually tries Helene's technique about the, the money and the name and the gluing and the dreaming, uh, let me know what happens. Because I, you know, she wrote it in this book. She sold millions of copies of this book. I've never heard of anybody. Nobody's ever come to me and said they've tried her techniques and it worked. I would love to, because this is the first time I've tried this. Right. I've known about this book for 20 years. I met her in 2008 and 20 years after I met her, this is the first time I'm trying this particular exercise. So, and I had her original book, like uh, I had the second book that I actually broke the spine on. Um, you see, look, I broke the spine on it because I was um, actually it's broken in two places. Um, I did that um, getting all the images out because there was no, I didn't have any access to any of these images. So I had to scan them and then we rendered them. And then I was able to print them again in this book. So this, all these images came from here. So, and this is the one, she didn't sign this one for me. I got this one. This is one my ex had bought me. He bought me a lot of sweepstakes books. And this is my first introduction, Helene. And honestly, even just meeting her felt like a million dollars. Um, but I think she's really happy with what I've done. And I'm going to just do her last book. Her last book is actually not, it's a, a, a story, kind of like a parable, like The Alchemist. Maybe a little quirkier, because <laughs> it is Helene after all. Um, but uh, yeah, so this will be the final one that I'm doing. But, uh, okay, so let me know if you've tried it, if you've manifested millions, so fun. And uh, I will see you on my next live stream. And, oh, yeah, every comment, remember, I'm the contest queen. You're in to win a copy of the book. And I'm going to give you the spec sticker. So you can't win if you don't enter. Leave a comment. And uh, good luck. And where's end broadcast? Here we go.